a YouTube, Facebook, whatnot. This is Blade Junkie, and you already know what I look like. And if you don't, well, you don't need to anyway, because that's not the important part. The important part is I've been offline or not posting at least for kind of a while now, and part of that is just because I've been lazy, which is fitting, so to speak. Uh, but I also have school to deal with, so. Yeah, my apologies for starting the video off with a crazy, stupid, boring segment, but hey, that's the way it goes sometimes. So, anyway, this is my latest vehicle. It's designed for off-roading, as you may tell by the ridiculous height of the body, which probably looks really stupid, and you're going to think, oh man, it's got the tallest center of gravity. It's got to be way up there, and it is, to be completely honest, and, um... I'm disappointed in that, but that's really the only way I could make it work the way I wanted it to. Um, so anyway, um, I would say the uh, chassis of it is based somewhat of heavily on a Unimog, uh, Mercedes-Benz kind of off-roader. Uh, I would say the body of it is based more heavily on the Tatra style of vehicle. Um, you know, so whatever. Um, but I, I, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I'm using the old school tires. These are not necessarily old school, really, but they've, uh, they've been used on the Off Rover Two, and um, a, mo a more recent set, um, which is, which I actually don't know what it's called. I believe it's some sort of monster truck. It's probably not called that at all. I don't know. All I know is that it's, it's pretty much Lego's first remote controlled truck as far as things that you build yourself from Technic um, that utilize power functions systems. Um, it was notable for having uh, four-wheel drive, which was terrible, I've heard, and uh, four-wheel steering, which was also not great. Um, and I actually only have a few parts that are from that set, and that's because I special ordered them from Bricklink. Um, so, yeah, um, I'll start by showing you the controller for it, now that you've already seen the front end of the vehicle. Um, now, this is the controller I'm using. It's the common controller for me, uh, as far as things that have multiple functions. Um, it's pretty much two controllers strapped together. Well, not strapped, of course, but you get the idea. Um, this would be forward and reverse. This has no function. Uh, and these control left and right. And, um, a lot of you are probably thinking, man, you're an idiot. Why do you have two steering wheels? Why, why, why would you do it the complicated way? Well, I, I really didn't do it the complicated way, to tell you the truth. So, uh, front end, uh, grill kind of bumper sort of thing. Um, it actually is placed away from the body and it's made out of links that can sway and bend and such to allow it to actually absorb stuff. So, you know, that's cool business there, so to speak. Um, made almost entirely out of LEGO Technic, uh, as I usually build things. Um, Kind of a detailed cab, which I might as well show you now. Roof portion. Rather, roof portion there. Now you can actually see it. Uh, well, that was a clutch move. Anyway, uh, simple kind of using some of the uh, older style plates there. Like, what would that be? Like, pre-2008? kind of sets used that, I think. Might have actually been later that they've been using that. But anyway, this here is the cab. And I'm looking at that camera, and I know you can't really see what's going on in there, so I don't exactly I don't exactly have a solution to that, aside from to the camera, like so. Um, uh, two little lever dealios, levers, whatever you want to call them. Um, they move, but they have no effect on performance or 
really anything aside from aesthetics. Uh, some seats, uh, steering wheel. Steering wheel actually doesn't turn in relationship to anything. It doesn't turn at all. It is locked in position because I was limited by parts. Um, yeah, let's see, what else is there? Oh yeah, it's got a dashboard, which I'm not looking at right there, but that's, that's about the best dashboard I could scramble with my parts. And I think it turned out reasonable, so to speak. Um, kind of this nice arc dealio going on here. I like that shape, as y'all know, because it's cool. Uh, uh, cause that's not really why. It's just a convenient shape. It's, it works well in a lot of situations, and it's strong, and yet it can allow a lot of movement. So that's that. Um, there's something else that you're probably not going to see at all, really, but there are lights on it. Not headlights, just little warning flasher kind of things on top. But I'll start by just showing you around the vehicle. Receivers are completely exposed, as is somewhat common, I think. Uh, two V1 IR receivers. Um... Yeah, fairly simple, kind of stupid, but it works. Uh, let's see if I can demonstrate. Okay, now this is kind of special for me because it's the first fully suspended vehicle I've made, really, aside from the crawler, but it's the first one that actually supported a body. Um, so it's not a whole lot as far as that goes because that's not the way that it's supposed to go. Um, you will see that it kind of goes off to one side first. That's just that's just the way the shocks work. There's one in there that's a little stronger than the other one, so whatever. Uh, fully independent suspension setup, whatever. That was some pretty terrible grammar, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you think? Um, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, that doesn't look like much suspension, but that's just because it's not, or I don't know, maybe it is, but. I think it's more than enough, considering to do that. Like that's not that's not great, maybe, but it's not terrible, I'd say. So, you know, um, like I said, full independent suspension in the front and the rear. Most of it is based on movement sideways. Total of four shock absorbers for each axle. Two of the stronger but smaller, and two of the weaker but smaller. Um, as you can see from here, there are kind of not a whole lot of special looking features, but whatever. Um, this little hatch here uh, opens up and that's... I'm not even looking at the right thing. Uh, this little thing can turn to uh, dim or turn on the lights. 8878 battery box inside. Just push a button and it's on and then close this little hatch and there's a gear on the inside of this hatch which you can't really see but it meshes with another gear. I don't know what the gear issues are so don't bother asking me because that's not the point of this. Um, and so like I said those gears mesh and allow me to turn on the lights that are inside the cab that are lighting up these little warning lights um, not very bright but they're not really supposed to be so not really much of a problem but whatever um, so that's that I guess um, two IR receivers I didn't mention that one extension cord which I can't show you because it's all very heavily encapsulated. Um, so let's see, uh, well that's the front end. That's the back end. Again, just showing you what the suspension looks like from various perspectives. Um, yeah, back has kind of roll, not necessarily roll bar, I don't exactly know what they refer to this as, but whatever. Um, so that if it rolls over, nothing gets significantly busted up. Um, 
this is actually also kind of a cargo bay thing. Put that up and then that raises that and that'll allow it to hold some kind of larger things. I was considering putting some sort of uh, material on that. I don't know what kind of material, but whatever the case, I decided not to because that wouldn't be Lego. Um, and I only like to use Lego parts. So, so yeah, like I said, a little storage area and then it collapses in the event of a rollover so that everything gets held together nicely. Um, and all that baloney. And there are quite a few rollovers, but very rarely does it roll over down to the top. So, not a huge issue, but still kind of a nice aesthetic feature. Um, I've just looked at the time and I'm rambling. Um, and I'm also spending a lot of time not saying anything, which you're probably very happy about. So, whatever. Uh, what the frick? You can't see anything in there, man. Yeah, it's just a silhouette. So, that kind of sucks, but. Uh, the point is, you can indeed see that there is a medium motor on that axle. Um, there's that suspension moving again. Now that I've done that, you can't even see it moving because my hand is in the way, but who cares? Um, front axle, uh, medium motor as well. Um, same suspension thing. Gonna show you that. Not very efficiently, but whatever. Uh... This is the underside of the vehicle. Um, well protected. There's a 1 to 3 gear ratio in here. I know I said I don't care about gear ratios, but I know at least that one. Which is crappy. I know. It's pretty bad. But anyway, um, 1 to 3 gear ratio under this plate here, which protects those gears from whatever it might be. Uh, two XL motors go into there, and they drive through here and here. Uh, these are new joints. These are the only joints. Uh, these are actually, I think, the only parts I have that were used in, um, that were exclusive to the latest uh, off-roader uh, and the Unimog, which I don't remember the number of. Uh, probably like triple eight oh or. I, I'm not, yeah, I shouldn't even try because I don't know what it is. But anyway, uh, lots of heavy plating all over it so that nothing gets broken. It can survive a pretty decent fall, um, which I'm not going to demonstrate because I'm not going to take the potential of messing up this video and preventing myself from being able to show you any more. Uh, custom designed axles. This whole thing is made without any of the new parts. It uses. Uh, old style plates in there, uh, all over the place, really. Um, show you this one here because it's easier. Um, there, it does have differentials, but because of the gear ratio, they uh, they really only exist for one purpose, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but it gears down enough that they really don't need to be there. The only reason they're there is because it can't turn without a diff because the wheels lock up and then that becomes a problem because it'll then start attempting to pull the universal joints in directions they're not meant to go and that's not good so yeah this is not the smallest axle setup I've ever made but probably the most robust uh, you will see that the entire underside of it has those plates and such, and this one's just blocked with pretty much a bunch of junk, but uh, it does work quite nicely as a plate. It gives no access to the differential in there, but it still gives it enough room to, you know, function the way it's supposed to. Um, you would be able to see the beveled gear for the at the side of the differential through this little gap if my lighting didn't suck. Um, there are these little uh, kind of interesting accessory wheels. These are just to help the tire, they prevent this whole thing from dipping significantly inward without the steering allowing it. Uh, very, very robust, like I said. Not very compact, but decent, I would say. Um, consider well, here's the thing: it goes through a lot of a lot of gearing down, kind of. So, assume take this wheel off. And by the way, these are the uh, this is the same wheel setup that I used on my. Uh, 
crawler, or not the crawler, sorry, the um, Epic 6x6, 4x4, 8x8, that whole thing. So each of these wheels is in fact using a total of eight tires, seven small tires inside, and the large tire that holds them all in place, and that provides a lot of weight so that the top-heavy nature of the vehicle doesn't affect it quite as much. And now, let's get a look at that axle. All right. So this is an 8 stud with a stopper on the end, and it's pressed up against an axle. Um, it's turning there. Uh, I don't know the gear ratio again, but I just thought I'd show you. So remove this here, dealio that holds all that on. And you can see the gears a bit. Um, and those are only on this portion. Those are the portals on the outsides, the turning portion of the whole axle setup. There are actually more gears inside of here, which you can't see yet again. You can kind of see it a little bit, but not very well. But, you know, you know pointing to it like right there. Tiny little sliver of one you can see, so that's another 1 to 3 ratio. Uh, I don't know what the ratio is inside the diffs, so screw that. Um, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the axle setup. I can't really demonstrate much more than that as far as the drive system goes. However, I can demonstrate the steering system. So, which in fact, I'm going to put this back on here. Like so. Very robust setup. Alright then. Here we are. This is it. Uh, oh yeah. As, as I figure, uh, or as one would figure, four-wheel drive is a necessity for something that's going to go off-road. Very, very slow, like very, very slow, like most vehicles that are trial vehicles. Um, so, you know, so that's cool. Um, like I said, diffs. So if I hold this side down and then I press this forward like that, when it's in range, those will turn in the proper direction. Um, and so, yeah, that's how that works. Um, but like I said, I was going to show you the steering, wasn't I? That there. Maybe that's not a very serious looking angle to you, but I'd say that's not bad. Although the steering point for the whole thing is really, really far away from the wheel which is part of why I needed these little extra wheels in here is because it got crazy bump steer, which is not good, which means that I needed to have a good ratio for the steering so that it would be strong and yet quick, and I've managed that. And again, I don't know the gear ratio. So, sorry, but whatever. So that that's controlled by that medium motor there um, that controls the steering. Um, but yeah, I say that's pretty decent steering angle, I think. Um, some others might not think so, but screw them. So that's cool. Um, and let's see, here's the cool part. This is this is the part that I was about to show you. And the reason that it needs diffs is because you can steer this and you can steer this. So having four wheel steering is really great because it allows you to really manipulate the center of gravity as well as really get over terrain that's not standard. For example, crab steering, surprisingly useful, actually, for getting around corners, um, because, you know, it's like the concept of a forklift. Some things have better steering because they can steer more quickly, and forklifts have that concept. Um, so I've kind of put that in here, and I figured, well, let's see, two-wheel steering is good, but four-wheel steering gets you a really nice radius, um, quite tight. But again, like I said, come on, there we go. Like I said, that requires differentials. Um, Otherwise, you'd get way more power to the wrong wheels, and then, you know, it's like you get way too much speed on uh, the inside wheels and too much power on the inside wheels, and that causes slipping. Um, and the outside wheels end up going a little too slow, and that just creates opposition between them. And that's not good, obviously. And for the probably more important part of the video. I know that I'm reaching nearly 20 minutes here, and that's probably stupid and it sucks, but I don't care because it's not for you, it's for me. Sorry. And I know I'm patient, but 
not quite patient enough. So, allow me. That was quite an ugly noise, wasn't it? All right then. Let's actually back it up a little bit more. More of the driving surface there. All right. So you can see all the wheels are turned right there. Now they're all turned back. Crab steering, of course, which is nice. Full steering, um, and of course, independent steering, which means that I can control them whenever I want to do whatever I want them to. Um, so that's cool, obviously, like I said. Now then, it's pulling on the cover. Why? Well, because that cover is not held down very well. That's why. So you can see it's climbing that. And I don't know if you can see it, but that that's actually kind of steep. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the gear ratio on it makes it, like I said, very, very slow. But um, that is, as I also said, a good thing. So this is a good opportunity for using that steering that doesn't make sense because I can steer it in ways that it's not exactly well in ways that most would not consider beneficial well what do you know a rollover um, but hey look nothing's busted so that's cool uh, everything there did what it was supposed to but like I said it does have a high center of gravity and that little bit of weight provided by those tires does make it slightly better but still not great. Um, so, of course, it is front heavy, as most trial vehicles are, because you're not going uphill with the heavy end behind you, and you could think of it as it's dragging you down, not to mention you'll pop a wheelie, um, which is what would happen if I were to drive this up back first, um, which I'm not going to do, because, well, that would be stupid. Uh, I suppose I could do it just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, but that would, again, probably do no good. Um, so, probably going to have another rollover in just a second here if I don't turn those wheels. Oh, no! Well, it was a bit of a rollover. More importantly, though, you see something that did come off. That's actually not a necessary part. It's... An additional steering rack. It actually doesn't hook up to any gears. Um, it's just in there for the purpose of being another rack. Just helps stability. Um, but in a proper event like that, where it went, you know, head over heels kind of thing, um, you will find that parts like that will go astray. Um, which is fine because that, considering. Considering all that just happened, all that happened really was that, and this little battery bay door opened. So, there's nothing wrong inside the cab, there's nothing wrong with the seats, there's nothing wrong with the wheels, there's nothing wrong with the axles, there's nothing wrong with the differentials, there's nothing wrong with the steering, everything works just fine. Which is good, because it's durable, because that's the way I made it to be. And so, I have bored you once again. And I am proud of that. I actually don't care at all whether or not you're bored, because like I said, it's not really for you, it's for me. However, I have showed other people these these Lego creations that I make, and um, I'm not a talkative person, really. It's, it's I am on these because I'm not in the real world, so to speak. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not particularly social, so... Uh, which, of course, contributes to why I'm capable of building things like this, and why I have three hobbies. For those of you that don't know, I, I do have three hobbies. They're Lego, Technic, uh, radio-controlled vehicles, both ground, flying, you know, those are both pretty sweet, and uh, video games as well. Um, yeah. Looking at that, it's hard to believe. But anyway, um, getting back to the point, uh, when I when I do show people these Lego creations, people that haven't seen them, people that haven't really known me very well, 
they're often quite amazed that Legos can be used to make something like this, and I'm not going to bore you with another rant on how amazing, you know, how amazing Legos are and how much stuff you can do with limited resources, but I think Legos are just a perfect demonstration of that, because you really can do a lot, considering the fact that you can't just make new parts whenever you want them. You have to use what's given to you, and that's often a problem. All right, now what you're going to see here is that. Yes, it's failed. And what is that exactly? Well, that failure has actually gone on inside of the front axle. And part of the reason for that is because there's too much weight on the front of the vehicle. And so going up backwards presents a pretty significant problem. So if I were to wheel it forward, like so, just attempting to do it without damaging too much, then I can show you what's gone wrong. And uh, what's gone wrong is, like I said, universal joint weakness. Right there. That's a universal joint. Or, rather, a third of one. Not as far as materials go, but as far as parts go. Uh, this is one of three parts making up a universal joint. This one here has come out. And it's kind of acceptable, I'd say, because, like I said, I designed it to be durable, but I didn't design it to go backwards, as most people don't design their vehicles to go backwards. At least, not off-road. Um, so, uh, here's an opportunity for a demonstration of just how stupid complicated it can be to repair a Lego vehicle um, that I've designed, because as I've said before in my videos, I build things so that they are robust. I build them so that they should never break. But I do build certain parts of it with failure points, and uh, universal joints, unfortunately, end up being the failure point regardless of my plan. And um, that's just the way it goes, because, you know, it's Lego. It's... This is part of the reason that I would like a 3D printer, because you can print metal with those things, and those are pretty sweet. So being able to print metal would be pretty awesome, because I would print myself some universal joints. have to go make some, in, probably in CAD first, AutoCAD. Um, but hey, uh, 3D printers are sweet, and that's where technology's gone, and today's technology is amazing, so we should be using it as far as I'm concerned at least. Um, now then, your boredom is probably killing you right now. Alright, now that I've got all that loose, I'll show you what's exactly going on here. That... There. Well, this is a piece of junk camera and it won't focus up on that thing because it's too close. The point is, uh, the entire thing is fine, but the failure of it is simply because of, well, the fact that there's more torque than the system can deal with. So the motors will keep turning, and the gears will keep turning, but the universal joint won't, because of course it has a very hefty limit. And what I mean by that is that it's got a powerful limit, as in it's not very capable. Um, and now then, here's the part where you're going to laugh, or maybe not. It's the part where this whole setup doesn't go back together very smoothly, and you're about to watch what is potentially very comical, um, I would say. Um, yeah, that's a lot of um, but the point is, like I said, uh, good gracious, I really ought to quit saying um, that the whole thing doesn't go together perfectly, and as a result of that, uh, a lot of the parts end up being very cramped in their space, which, as I'm sure many of you can imagine, is not a good thing. And you'd be right. Um, so yeah. Now then, see if I can do this the quick way, uh, which unfortunately isn't that quick, but whatever. What do I care? It's only me. I'm the only person that's really ever going to care about watching this, so if I have to deal with my slow fixing techniques of the time, that's fine, because it's not about the fixing it. For me, at least, it's about it's about being able to do it in the first place. But like I said, this wouldn't have happened if I were driving it properly. Um, 
which I would have been, but for the sake of demonstration, I decided to drive it like a dummy, with the heavy end at the back, where it's not supposed to be. Uh, okay, that could be up to preference. Um, hardy har har and such. Um, feel free to make your jokes here, folks. Um, and all that bullcrap. Um, so anyway, that was the repair that I had to make. I don't know how long it took me. Not really timing it, so whatever. Uh, hey, I could time it. I could just go back, watch this video, and deal with it. But, alas, this is not the case. Um, well, like I said, it's, well, I say a lot of stupid things, don't I? Um, it's not the case, even though the video is still recording right now as I speak, which means that I could still go back later. But the point is, you are bored, and if you're watching this, and you want instructions for any of this, um, for the most part, screw you, because <laughs> uh, it's been assembled. I can't exactly tell you how I assembled it, because as far as LEGO Digital Designer is concerned, it can't be done. Believe me, I know, I've tried. Uh, but while I'm talking about LEGO Digital Designer, I did successfully manage to build an orbital uh, an orbital axle, um, so it can gear down within the axle, um, which is which is nice. But it's also a piece of junk, kind of. Uh, so well, and here's the great thing: what I've always found is that people make um, orbital orbital things, uh, orbital hubs for wheels, never for this size. They always make them for the monstrous wheels. I don't know what they are, the claws or whatever, the they used to come with a tractor, puller, something. Um, maybe that's what they're called, the puller. I don't know. The point is, they always make them for huge wheels. Wheels that are maybe, whoops, maybe double the width of any of these wheels. And I found that to be a problem. So I designed one that would work with other wheels, most specifically the bubble style of Lego Technic wheel seen here and uh, I might not actually have one assembled right now but I do I do actually have instructions for that uh, this is what I do have assembled right now this actually is the the most compact steering setup I have it's like I said custom uh, it does have a gear reduction in there, portal axle, uh, thinner than all my others by one stud, um, which in the name of Lego is quite impressive, I'd say, or significant, at least. Um, however, this is not kind to independent suspension. Um, so yeah, that's that. And I apologize for not having a portal axle, or my apologies, again, not portal axle, an orbital axle. Because I do actually have a design for one, and I have built it, and it works. But, more importantly, LEGO Digital Designer allowed me to make it. Um, so I might be able to get that one out there. Still don't know yet. But, um, yeah. My apologies for boring you. We're running on about 34 minutes. That's a lie. We're running at 33 minutes and 55 seconds on the dot. Well, by the time I ended that second, it was... You know, by the time I ended that first sentence, rather, not all these correcting sentences, it would have been at 34 minutes. Anyway. Um, that's that. The, the, the kind of cruddy, normal stuff for me. Uh, just a custom build, ground up all my design um, so yeah that's nifty uh, and stuff but anyway feel free to go back to your life heck if you're still watching right now I applaud you but I also shame you for being too stupid to go use your time elsewhere but that's your decision so whatever
that's how you want to go about things. You go about things that way. Anyway, uh, this is the end of the video. Uh, feel free to rate and please don't subscribe. I don't even care if you do. That's your own time wasted if you subscribe to me because I don't post often. But uh, thanks for watching. If you got through all the way, uh, congratulations. You've won the... Well, you haven't won anything. Unless shame is a, a prize, then you've won the shame of wasting your life. Uh, so, yeah, this is Play Junkie signing off. Thanks for watching. And like I said, don't forget to comment and rate. And uh, for those of you who have rude comments to make, and I know there are many, you probably won't even hear this comment I'm making right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you ahead of time, if you're going to make a stupid comment, screw you. Um, that just about covers it, and I will end on that note at 36 minutes and 8 seconds. Goodbye. Blade Junkie, signing off.